Hello and welcome to the Center for Independent Studies. My name is Oliver Hartwig. I'm a research fellow here at the center. My name is Adam Crichton. I'm also a research fellow here at the center. And together, we're the authors of Australia's Angry Mayors, How Population Growth Frustrates Local Councils. That's the third report in a series on population growth. And in this report, we had a look at local government and how local government leaders felt about population growth, because that's one of the missing elements in the population debate. We hear a lot about the federal government. We hear about a federal sustainable population minister, for example. But how local government actually um, experiences population growth is widely unknown. And that's why we decided to ask them. We had constructed a survey and we wrote to all of Australia's local councils, 560 of them, and asked the mayors and the chief executives to tell us their perspective, their views on population growth, how it affects them, what their concerns are and what they would like to see changed. And the results were actually quite startling, I thought. We found that Australia's mayors are indeed quite angry because they were not happy with the way population growth is financed. Because whenever there is population growth, basically it means you have to provide extra infrastructure, you have to build the roads, you have to deal with the neighbors. And unfortunately, what we found, local government leaders are not properly compensated for that. That's true. And of the 100, 121 councils that responded, certainly we, uh, we learned some startling facts. What, what do you think is the most uh, startling of all the findings from our, from our response development? I think what was really startling about the whole report was that um, less than 10% of the respondents in our survey were happy with the local government finance system. I think we got more than 90% saying that the current funding structures were either partially or completely inappropriate for dealing with population growth. I think that was quite startling, the anger that you could f really sense in the response. Certainly that's true, and also the, uh, the ramifications of population growth for local councils, that was, that, that was considered uh, negatively too, I think, by, uh, by a large fraction of them. Yeah, um, th that's quite true, actually. We, we found uh, quite a large number of councils telling us that uh, they thought population growth actually hurts their council's bottom line, when you would have thought that when a council grows, actually the revenue base grows with that, and unfortunately that wasn't the case. So what we also found then was uh, that a, a number of councils, large number of councils really, um, increased rates when population growth occurred, and they also used developer levies to pay for that. So in the end, what we found was that when population growth ha um, happens at a local level, that um, new and existing residents and developers are asked to pay for that. That's true. And these are these developer levies. What are some of the problems with using those? Well, the problem with the developer levies is really that uh, they are of course not really paid by developers. They are just passed on. So in the end, people who are moving into these areas are asked to pay an additional, well, sometimes eighty, sometimes a hundred thousand dollars, just uh, for the infrastructure. That's uh, some kind of uh, infrastructure levy that wasn't paid by the parents' generation, for example. So it's a problem really for intergenerational justice, I think. It's also contributing to the uh, the housing affordability problem too, well, which is which is another huge issue in Australia. And and so these 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 kind of little unknown processes actually have a very big impact on absolutely, the ultimate price absolutely. of houses. So what we really found was uh, that there are no proper incentives for councils to actually engage actively in population growth and managing that growth because in the end there's little for them to gain. They can't really improve, improve their finances enough. They're just struggling to get by um, given the population growth that is already happening. So for us really the question in the report, uh, in the conclusions was what can be done about it? Yeah, and certainly some of the councils had a few ideas about this. They, uh, they overwhelmingly suggested that they would like a slice of income tax to go to local councils and also a slice of the GST. Um, and, and this is to be expected. I mean, of course, all, you know, all levels of government would, would like more money. But, but the, uh, the important question for us is, is uh, how to get the incentives right. So basically how to encourage local councils to accommodate and indeed to want to accommodate more people. Well, I think there's a constitutional question, right? Because at the <coughs> moment, even uh, trying to give them a share of the income tax or GST would probably be constitutionally impossible. Yeah, that's true. Because There's constitutionally, they don't quite exist. Yep, certainly. And in fact, local councils have, have, have tried uh, twice to be mentioned in the constitution. There's been two referendums in Australia to mention them, and actually both of them have failed. So and they're trying again now. And they're trying again, but it's, I mean, you know, I don't know, maybe third time lucky for local government, but I think mm. probably that, that it will fail again. And so I think we need to live within our current constitution. And so. Um, so one way to, um, to get around this is for the state governments to change the way they allocate funding to local governments and basically to make the grants far more tightly linked with the number of residents in those communities. But actually that's another problem because they wouldn't even know how many well, people live there. Yes, that's right. I mean, uh, many councils really don't have any idea 
uh, strictly how many people are living within their borders because they, they simply don't know. They only know who owns the property, basically, you know, who are the ratepayers. But uh, within those uh, various residences, there could be many people living and using the services of, of the local council. Mm. Um, so you're always waiting for the next census. Yes, which is five years away sometimes. Yeah, exactly. so, uh, so possibly, you know, there'd have to be a more frequent update of information um, to, to make the grants more tightly linked with population. So I think we really have two conclusions from the report. First, a lot more research needs to be done on how councils are actually responding to population growth and what can be done about it. And the second conclusion is how can we make local government finance reform really happen in the country because it's never quite popular and it's yeah. certainly very difficult and yeah. tricky in the process. That's true. It's um, certainly pointless to have a major population debate without, without thinking about these issues of local government and how they raise money. Because at the end of the day, it's the decisions that the 560 councils around Australia make that uh, that really affect whether Australians want more people and also uh, whether they'll have the services to, uh, you know, to, uh, to have a sustainable and, and uh, productive existence within them. Mm. Well, I think there is more research to be done. As I said, it was number three in our population and growth series. I'm quite sure there will be number four, five and six coming relatively soon and I think we'll have to go back to the issue of local councils because it is such an important issue, not just uh, for population growth, but really for Australian democracy. And I think we can look forward to a lot more publications in this field. So with that, I recommend the report to you. You will find it on our website. It's um, available for download at www.cis.org.au. Thank you very much. Thank you.